right. God. Stick a couple fireballs in there. What does this one do again? Me. I can't use that one, right? No, I can, but it takes up two spell slots. Um. Fireball. <laughs> Burning Arc do. It does cool stuff, that's what it does. Hmm, honestly. We'll do this. Okay. Sila, did you get any new stuff? No. Okay. Whew. Right, let's start the voice acting. <laughs> the old elf smiles when he hears your footsteps. Allow me to congratulate you on your victory and acquiring mythical powers capable of casting down the strongest of demons. I got the page you're looking for from the Grey Garrison. The storyteller carefully takes your find. Yes. You are right. Another piece of evidence from the past I have forgotten. The old elf's expression becomes withdrawn. The storyteller clenches the pages you've brought. His voice becomes a bit younger and more energetic. My hand touches the stone wall. The cold pierces my palm like teeth of a hungry dog sinking into a piece of meat. I don't take my hand away. I let the stone enjoy my warmth in return for its service. It accepts my caress and my unasked question. The one it's been asked thousands upon thousands of times. Where should I go next? Behind me I hear the loud stomping of the minotaurs that guard the godforsaken place. I tricked and outwitted them, leaving only a trace of my presence. There is darkness lurking up ahead, honing its swords, claws, and teeth in the hope that a rare traveler visits its lair but today it will get no one. This labyrinth is alive. Its red-veined stone walls resemble the guts of a huge creature. If you keep still and listen closely, you can hear it breathing in the wind that sweeps through this place. Where do I go from here? Forward, to the place whence the wind carried a faint chuckle, whence comes the faint smell of ash, whence, a few ages ago, Demon Lord Baphomet began his great escape. Baphomet? Are you inside his labyrinth? Yes, I'm traveling through the Ivory Labyrinth. This is not the most pleasant of my journeys, but it is necessary to reach my goal. How are you able to evade all the dangers of the Ivory Labyrinth? The storyteller raises his chin proudly. Have you forgotten who you're speaking to? I am the last Archmage of Kionin. I have been to many, many dangerous places, and this is just one of the many. It won't be the last. What do you need to do? What do you need from the Ivory Labyrinth? An answer to a question. A key to a secret. Knowledge that can save many lives. A sliver of a smile appears on the storyteller's lips. My kinfolk were weaklings and cowards. They ran from danger, but one stood up to my enemy and Baphomet will give me the weapon to win. Please, continue. For several years, I have thought about how to defeat Earthfall. My enemy has no flesh, and it's impossible to kill. It blazes through everything in its path. It doesn't enslave, but destroys life itself. And I have found the answer. I know how to save my world. Earthfall came to destroy Galorian. Its strike was brutal, and my world barely withstood it. But what if Earthfall was resisted by not one world, but by several worlds at once? 
What if Heaven or Elysium come to help the dying Galorian? If I manage to merge my world with another one, meld them together, the power of the disaster will weaken. The denizens of Galorian will be able to temporarily take shelter in the adjacent plane. Civilizations will not die. Our culture will continue to exist. We will not be forgotten. Baphomet, the cunning and insidious lord of Minotaurs, was once a captive in Asmodeus's prison. But only ten years passed before Baphomet was able to escape, taking his own prison with him, which later became the Ivory Labyrinth. Such an achievement deserves respect, and it is the goal of my research. Moving matter between planes is what interests me now. I stop near strange symbols covering the wall of the labyrinth. I run my hand over them to ensure they are real. Encrypted riddles drawn by Baphomet during his imprisonment. I take out the bark-covered notebook and painstakingly copy the symbols into it. Behind me, two minotaurs are fighting deceived by the net of spells I have wrapped around myself like a blanket. You want to connect the planes? That's dangerous. The elf is silent for a moment. When he talks, there is disdain in his voice. Dangerous. Difficult. Almost impossible. But tell me, is this risk not worth the Thassalon Empire perishing before my eyes? Does Golgon, the Cyclops' kingdom, deserve death? What about the Abolith Empire? The storyteller moves his lips silently. Another plane will pay for saving Galorian. There will be wars, and then a new world will come. But we will survive. We will defeat Earthfall, and history will not condemn the victors. A bark-covered notebook? The one your mentor gave you? The storyteller lowers his head, but a moment later he jerks it back up. Yes. Blinded by my pride, I tore it to pieces when I thought I would not follow my kinfolk. I'm still not going to run, but the knowledge written in this notebook by my former mentor might serve my purpose. The elves managed to open a portal to so again, Sovyrin, and keep it open until all our people escape from Galorian. Their cowardice deserves disdain, but their knowledge is unquestionable. I returned to Kionin and gathered the pieces of my torn notebook. Now it is my sword aimed at the heart of Earthfall. By combining the wisdom of elves and the cunning of Baphomet, I will save the world. What happened next? I copied the strange symbols into the notebook. I haven't the slightest idea what these scribbles mean. What was the future demon lord thinking when he wrote them? While he was imprisoned in a cell with no way out, was he still in his right mind? I will need help to understand these notes. Otherwise, decrypting them might take more time than Phorasma has given me. One of the minotaurs behind me killed the other one, tore his heart out, and devoured it. His blood-stained nose sniffs the air sharply. His bloodshot eyes slide from wall to wall. He senses a stranger, but he doesn't scare me. I am certain of my powers and the spells hiding me. I've done my work and can now leave this place. And still I linger. What is this strange presence I feel behind me, like someone is watching me, despite all my protective spells? Who are you? I ask carefully, not hoping for an answer. Darkness, a coy female voice whispers in my ear. Against my will, I shudder. The storyteller stops talking for a long while. The vision ended at the most interesting moment, didn't it? He says bitterly at last. Please, find the rest of the pages from this bark-covered book. I must know what happened next. Just want to get rid of the black text. Uh, anything... Oh, sweet, I have the necessary materials now. Restore this relic for me. Oh, by the way, we got train time going. The elf cautiously uncorks the vials and begins to work his enchantments. The essence evaporates, turning into light that streams onto the buckle. The light thickens, becoming gold. The Covenant of the Inheritor. That is the name of this relic. This buckle once adorned the belt of a glorious knight from Mendev. It is the embodiment of a promise made to a young girl by a powerful deity. A promise, a great promise that has changed much in the world. 
When you touch the restored relic, a strange vision comes to you. It's as if you can see the events that happened to it in the past. A burning sensation spreads across your chest from the very spot where your mysterious wound sometimes opens. What is this? The influence of the storyteller's spells? Or is it something else? I had a vision. The old elf frowns. How strange. You are a remarkable mortal. No one has ever shared my visions before. What do you think caused it? Perhaps these things have something to do with your destiny, or the fate of someone related to you. I do not have an answer, only advice. Seek out such relics. Look for what links them at all, and you will know the truth. Have you decided to join the crusade? I have decided not to, I'm afraid. My path and the path of the crusade lead in the same direction, but, alas, they are not yet one in the same. After the demons were driven away from Canabras, their path into the ward womb became open, if only temporarily. I am planning on using this opportunity to visit. The elf falls silent. It doesn't matter now. I'd hate to bore you with the details of my venture, which may prove useless even for myself. However, I'll try to return to the Crusades and aid them in, our, in their confrontation with the demons after I'm done. I hope to meet you again in this world rather than the next. All right, what'd I get? What's this belt? Uh oh. Did I actually get something? Oh, there we go. When placed on the belt, emits a holy aura. All party members within 30 feet get a plus two bonus to caster level checks made to overcome spell resistance. And good alignment there and count as if they were made of cold iron. Holy shit! That is so powerful! Um You don't have a belt yet, do you, Sila? That'd be really good for you. Uh what, what's your necklace again? Persuasion checks. Uh, where am I? There we are. Where's the belt? Oh, this there we doesn't go. suit me. What? Can I can only I use it or something? Oh pfft. I wasn't putting the belt slot, I was putting it in the ring spot. Thanks, but no thanks. What? Which spot does it go in? Oh, can't be used by this character. Is it who can no one use it? Uh, none of my characters can use it. So... That sucks. <laughs> oh well. Alright. Well, Miss Nenyo. Oh, you got nothing for me. Okay. This is Nura. This is Nura Debar's tent. It seems she bought a lot of unnecessary items along with her. A lot of unnecessary items that are mine now. Goodness, there is so much happening here. Oof. Okay. Of course you got two courtesans around you, Darren. Ah, there you are, you dashing troublemaker, you. Darren flashes you a self-satisfied smile. Our short acquaintance has come to an end. Very soon you will depart on your crusade, where you'll scrape by on horrible rations, struggling vainly to fall asleep amidst snoring soldiers, be rudely awoken by the freezing cold, and have to look upon the dour faces of self-righteous pigs before you finally perish in the maw of some demon. I have a journey ahead of me, too. I've just rented a sailboat in the south. I've also hired an excellent chef and a host of other entertainments. Well, to each their own, I suppose. Darren pauses, then suddenly adds in a more serious tone. You know, I am genuinely sad to see you go. If it sounds like mockery, forgive me. I cannot switch off my venom gland on a whim, you see. But you intrigue me. If only we could have spent a little more time together, but... 
Of course, Damon grimaces. Not under these conditions. Let the Crusaders and the Demons have each other. With any luck, they'll take this entire sanctimonious spectacle down with them. You know, how I'd like it if you stayed. You intrigue me too. Darren's eyes light, light up a little. He is obviously pleased by your attention, yet he answers in his typical mocking tone. Alas, life is full of disappointments. I must reject your offer. In any case, I intend to wait until the army departs. I do love a good send-off, especially when it is I who is staying and someone else who is heading off to meet a dreary and hopeless end. Sometimes it does one good to ruminate on the unfairness of life. Well then, farewell, Commander. I assume I shall be on, I shall be your most precious memory on the this most disgusting and exhausting road to the pointless slaughter of battle. Or, if not the most precious memory, then at least the most stirring. Darren smirks before instantly losing all interest in you. Or, at least he pretends to. You little thing, Darren. If you can't fool me... What is that? It's a of arrow of law. What? That is so excessive sounding. Uh, Jernal. Good day. Do you remember me? I'm Jernal. We spoke in the Defender's heart. So, you're the commander of the crusade now. Excuse me. Erstel knows it's hard to imagine. Wait, no. Is this the priest? Oh. I'm Jernal. We spoke in the Defender's heart. I thought this was the Pathfinder guy. So you're the commander of the Crusades now. Erstel knows it's hard to imagine someone worthy of, worthy of taking up the post than the savior of Canabras. May the good gods help you prevail. <laughs> Who are you? I'm a humble priest of, priest of Erstel. I completed my trials and took my holy orders only recently, and now I am serving God and, my, and the people to the best of my ability. What were you doing in the Defender's Heart? What I was bound to do under my holy orders, I healed the wounded and buoyed the health to fight another day. Have you joined the crusade? Don't take it in, miss, but no, I haven't. I have my own task. I am needed in Chili Creek, a tiny hamlet which, due to some oversight, has been left without a priest these many years. I'm about to set sail for there. I'll be making my journey al along Old Man Selen. Do you know what the queen does to people who keep her waiting? I don't, but you better... But I know you better not find out. Horgus. Oh. Oh, hello. Oh, what, what should his voice be? The burly soldier with an impressive beard greets you with a broad smile. Will Sagans, the camp quartermaster at your service. How may I be a help? Tell about yourself. The quartermaster looks at you sheepish, looks away sheepishly. Eh, they ain't much to tell, really. I was born in Canabras to a humble family. I got an education, taught myself to read and write. Got drafted into the army, spent three years as a shield bearer in the first line. I left after I did my time and joined the Stonemasons Guild, then, then moved on to shipwrights and rose to crew, crew chief. Sailed to Iobara twice and returned with goods. Made some money, built a house, but haven't started a family yet. I think I will after we're done with this war. But a few years ago, something started gnawing at me. I got this feeling like I needed to go home. That there was a storm heading for my native city. And when, the, when there's trouble in Mendev, there's only one thing to do. You go to the recruit and sign up for the army. And so I did. At first, they wanted to make me an infantry sergeant. But well, they decided I'd be a better fit in the supply department. I can't... I can take care of army property. And I'm pretty handy around a warehouse, not to mention. I know how to manage a band of helpers. And so, that's how I became a quartermaster. Wilsert gives you a shy smile and shrugs, as if there were, this were a wholly unremarkable story typical of any crusader. What are your duties in the camp? Eh, a little bit of everything. What's an officer to a soldier? A strict father. So, what does this make a quartermaster like myself? Something like their mom, that's what. I make sure the lads have everything they need to defeat the enemy and come back from battle in one piece. Wilson starts ticking th things off his fingers. That means food, firewood, medicine, tents, mended clothes, fixed weapons. The horses have got to be fed and watered. The camp's got to be fortified by evening and broken up by morning. I make sure the wages are paid on time and the wagon wheels don't squeak. And then there are reports. Gods, until you ask, never realize how many duties I actually had. What do the soldiers think of the new commander? 
They mostly tell tales about your unusual power, but they don't shy away from talking about you as a person, too. Soldiers are always like that. If Iomade herself descended from heaven, you bet they'd jabber on about how she grips her sword and how good she looks in her armor. Word is that you're as good as a swordsman as you are a spellcaster. There was even a heated debate as to whether you wield your weapon with your left hand and cast spells with your right or the other way around. Folk came down on the side of sword in the right, spells in the left. But I bet they can't wait for a chance to see you in action just to be sure. Let's see what you got, boy. <laughs> Double Jeopardy Great Club. Plus two enchantment. Okay. Painful Remorse Heavy Shield. That is powerful. Uh, let's take care of selling. Good God, I have so much stuff to sell. Uh, no, don't need that. Don't need that. Hmm. Like, I know I should look up the companions to see what I should be keeping, but... Ugh. Too much. One-handed 1d10. I, I, that's too good not to, not to keep. Tempest. Okay. Keep the armor. Uh, let's see. Keep all that. The real question is, does he have a bag of holding? Oh god, the books actually weigh something? Oh no. <laughs> I need to sell those. Really wish I knew where these severed heads were coming from. Oh, yes, the heirloom sword thing. Why is there just porcelain? Like, what? I mean, I'll, I'll keep them because I guess they're weird looking. I don't know what's... If anything, I should be keeping any of these. Like, all the important stuff is... Here, this is all, like, important things. I guess I'll leave it at that. A lot of the same thing, huh? Hopefully he has a bag of holding. That would be very, very nice. I guess this is to arm you up if you didn't get any weapons earlier? Who knows? Oh. That went really, really, really far down. Oh no. Earthbreaker plus one. Okay. Well, I don't need any of this, I think. Tila, do you need any of this? They have full plate? <gasps> they do have full plate. Why is full plate have a... Why is full plate more powerful? Weird. Well, I'm getting full plate. I'll grab two of them just in case. Half my party can't even wear armor, like it matters. Ring of protection, yep. Adamantine, okay. I don't know what Adamantine does. Oh, 
Oh, damage reduction. Damn. That's really expensive, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's 18k. Runes. Okay, Jinx. Let's give our girl some full plate. Hell yeah. And then it's full plate, good on me. Speed. Oh, I can't even wear full plate. Oh, no. Oh, hopefully I get a party member that can, because that's, I mean, it was only like, what, 2,600? It's not that bad. Storyteller. Oh, no, not that yet. I don't want to go to Commander's Ten. This is Mani Levius Ten. We both used to use traveling, but the Queen insisted our tent. Our tent be furnished like a commanding officer's. The screen doesn't. Uh, is The text isn't on screen long enough for me to read it, honey. I need you to look at me like that. I don't need the sass from you, woman. 